Hey everybody, in this episode we're going to talk about inheritance in Java object-oriented programming. Now this is a general programming principle, so it's going to apply pretty much to any of the other programming languages that support object-oriented programming. Also, this is something you can just jump in, you don't have to follow along with all of my Java videos. So if you're seeing this and you're like, oh I don't really know what's going on, no problem. So basically, we have this user class and you can just jump in and, and create a basic empty class, that's fine. But you can think of a user as pretty general, you know, it doesn't really describe a whole lot. So we might want something a little bit more specific, but you know, let's say a lot of the same stuff is going to apply for that new thing. So maybe we have a website for students and teachers. You know, maybe it's something like Udemy where you can have an instructor profile or you can just be a student. Well, in that situation, we might want to create a derived class, which is a class that inherits from user. So let's try and do something like that. I'm kind of just going along with this and we'll, we'll fix any issues as we go. So we'll go over here and right click on our project, new class, and let's just go ahead and call this one student finish public class student. And what we do is we say extends user. We get our first error, implicit super constructor user is undefined. So if you're just jumping in, you created that user class with, with it being empty, you're probably fine. But basically the reason that's happening is because we created a custom constructor here, which makes that default constructor not be implicitly created. So all we have to do is just say public user like so. All right, now we should have gotten rid of that error so far so good baby before we get too deep into this though i almost totally forgot i really need to say thank you to our sponsor <laughs> this video is sponsored by diff blue diff blue offers a free ai powered unit test generation tool for java developers diff blue writes your unit tests for you and delivers human readable code to increase your test coverage and speed up your development while ensuring you didn't break anything along the way with a free community edition available as an IntelliJ plugin, DiffBlue is super easy to get started with. Best of all, as a viewer of my channel, you can get a free license upgrade to use the community edition for all commercial code and three free months of the professional edition, which has additional features and support. Get started using the link below. So the way this works is anytime we create a student, it's going to inherit everything from user. You can think of it as a user just with some extra stuff in it. So let's go ahead and create something specific to just students. We'll just create an attribute. We'll just do something like Boolean verified. So if they verify their email or phone number in some way, and we will default this to false and we will create a way to get and set that. So let's go ahead and start this with an underscore void set verified. Boolean verified, and then we'll just set that to the backing field here. Verified is equal to verified. And we'll do something similar for the getter. So this is gonna return Boolean, and this will be get verified. It's not gonna take any parameters, and it'll just return underscore verified. All right, that should be good. So let's go ahead and create a student and see what that looks like. So we'll go over in our main method ignore all this stuff for a moment. We're going to use some of this later, so I'm going to keep that. And what we'll do is we'll just, uh, let's, let's do this up here. We'll, we'll push, push these users down here. So right at the very beginning of our main method, we will say, I'm actually just going to comment this out for a moment. We will say student S is a new student. And then let's go ahead and print out their verified s.get verified run this and we should get false because that was is what we defaulted it to in the class over here so so far so good but the beautiful thing here is that it has some of the other stuff so sys out s dot and you can see we have oh that verified shouldn't be visible there so we need to change that to private so save, and now we should just see all the stuff inherited. So we have get membership, we have get name, and then we have some of these other things that came with it. So let's try 
s dot set membership and we'll set this to gold so we're able to give this student a membership even though in our student class we didn't define anything for that um here i don't know what i'm thinking we, we want to put this on the outside and then we'll do s dot get membership here there we go so let's go ahead and run this and we should get false and then gold which we just set so that is how inheritance works the members are automatically inherited when you put extends. Now you may also see implements here, and that is where you can inherit basically from interfaces, which is a little bit different, but fairly similar. When you think of this type of inheritance, you can think of it as being something. A student is a user. Now, if you get into interfaces, you can think of it as behaving or embracing something. So you know you a, a uh, student might implement an interface that describes student behavior. So maybe the ability to register for a course or, or something like that. Um, I'm not really going to get into that into a ton of detail, so I don't want to get too distracted. But the main reason I'm calling that out is because you'll see two things in Java, which is extending from classes and implementing interfaces. And they work very similar. Java does not have what's known as multiple inheritance, which you can find in C++ Python. Instead, it uses the ability to inherit from one class, so it can only have one parent, but you can also implement numerous interfaces to basically give a similar capability. One other thing I wanted to mention before we go is when it comes to method overriding, you can do that for custom classes as well, just like we overrode equals methods in our user class, you can override things defined in the user class inside of the student class. So you can look into that as you build out more complex classes and basically you can have this inheritance hierarchy where children are overriding methods defined in the class immediately above it or from classes a few tiers up. Everything ultimately inherits from object, which is where to string comes from, as well as equals and so forth. So stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to talk about polymorphism.